It's the 6th of May and I'm Tom Glasson. Welcome to The Roast. Now, with the possibility that the government might introduce tough anti-piracy laws as early as this week, I'm getting in whilst I still can and downloading all the shows. You know it's illegal now, right, Tom? I mean, these would just be different laws. Ah, yes. Um... These aren't mine, by the way, I'm just holding them for a friend. Tonight, the government considers tough new anti-piracy laws and a student protest interrupts the Q&A broadcast. So thank you, student protesters. First, though, Mark Humphreys has the headlines. Billionaire James Packer and Channel 9 boss David Gingell engaged in a fist fight on the weekend. Sadly, there were two survivors. I expected better from Packer. I never thought a man who runs casinos would do anything to hurt another person. The brawl was filmed on Sunday, but like anything to do with Channel 9, it wasn't shown until much later. Let's take a look. James Packer floats like a butterfly, stings like a dugong. Gingell escaped the fight unscathed, but Packer left with a black eye and also, if I'm not mistaken, a severely swollen chin. News Corp reportedly paid $200,000 for images of the brawl and published several heavily watermarked photos. I know whenever I pay $200,000 for something, I draw all over it with black texture. Among the other pictures released is this one, where you can clearly see a bodyguard going to great lengths to guard his own body. And Gingell isn't the only network boss who's been in a brawl. If this photo is to be believed, ABC chairman Mark Scott was brutally clobbered by Miff Warhurst. The Australian Taxation Office, the place that steals your money and then uses it to build roads, has sent its employees a written warning to wear less revealing clothing in the office, because Lord knows taxation is titillating enough as it is. ATO management sounded this warning to staff. Items of clothing such as thongs, board shorts or revealing attire are just some examples of clothing that are considered to be too casual. Terrible news for that ATO worker who was trying to claim Havaianas as a work expense. Commissioner of Taxation Chris Jordan, seen here about to get a workplace lap dance, is believed to have personally ordered workers home from the ATO's Sydney CBD building, telling them to come back in more appropriate attire. Personally, I've never encountered that problem. I'll be buried in this suit. But it's good to know they'll be making an effort, so when you send off your tax return, you can take comfort that your group certificate won't come into contact with any bare midriff. For The Roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Well, first up tonight, Fairfax is reporting that the federal government might implement strict new online anti-piracy measures as early as this week. It's pretty much the nightmare scenario envisaged by those doomsday preppers. And if you've not seen that show, well, I can hook you up after this. The government is apparently proposing a three-strike rule where you would get a series of official warnings when you're caught downloading illegal content before facing harsher penalties, which in practice means you could download The Hobbit, then the desolation of smog and you'd still be okay, but if you tried to download the third one when it came out, well, you'd be in big trouble. Although I think we can all agree the real crime in that situation was 48 frames per second. Just... And the three strikes rule is just like how we punish murderers. I mean, you can kill the first two people no problem, but if you kill a third, you'd better believe you'll be hit with a pretty big fine. The second proposal being considered by Attorney General George Brandis is geo-blocking certain websites like The Pirate Bay and creating The Great Firewall of Australia. Oh yeah, that's an original name. Did you pirate it from China, Mr Journalist? And George Brandis says we need these new measures because piracy is is killing our film industry, which, if true, is terrible. I'm sorry, Tom, but no one is torrenting Red Dog, and if they are, then they've seriously misspelled Orange as the New Black. No, if the government is really worried about killing the Australian film industry, they should reject the Commission of Audit's recommendation to cut Screen Australia funding in half like it was a character in the Scandinavian drama The Bridge. We are a people with needs as simple as Hodor's dialogue, Tom. Just let us watch our stories and then talk about them on the internet. We just want to be part of a community. Thursday, 8pm Central on NBC. And if there is one way to unite the complacent young people who can't be bothered to cock up a protest on Q&A, it's messing with our precious internet. I mean, you can threaten to increase university fees. You can make universal healthcare slightly less universal. You can even raise the retirement age and force us to work until we're 70. But if you so much as lay your Peter Baelish little finger on our internet freedom, I will spoil every show you have ever held dear because I have watched them all before you. I am not a downloader, Brandis. I am the downloader. I am the one who knocks down your firewall like a house of cards. It's revenge. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I don't get any of those references, which is strange because Australians are among the biggest pirates per capita. To which Australians responded, ooh, how do I pirate per capita? Is it Italian? So what drives us to download so much illegal content? Well, one example might be the Lego Movie, which was largely made in Australia, but we in New Zealand were then the last two countries to screen it some 54 whole days after its US release. We had to wait ages. Well, almost all of us. Village Roadshow invited the Attorney General George Brandis to private film screenings in Canberra, where an executive extolled the benefits of a strong anti-piracy regime. And I think Village Roadshow's onto something here. I will totally stop torrenting films now that it looks like we're getting invited to private screenings by the distributors to see their films ahead of time. And by ahead of time, I mean at the same time as America, the Caribbean, all of the Middle East and Africa, most of our Asian Pacific neighbours and every major market in Europe. Until then, well, is it any wonder that Australians turn to piracy? Alex Lee has more. You know who understands what Australians are going through, Tom? Somali pirates. Isolated people who watch ship after ship float by, filled with products that they desperately want themselves but can't get in their own country. Alex, I have to say the pirate piracy comparison's pretty stale. So is the American content on Australian screens. Nothing makes us feel more cut off from the rest of the world than watching the rest of the world enjoy great TV. You know, why should we be forced to pay hugely inflated prices to watch something after everyone else. Yeah, but can't we just be patient and wait until it comes here to avoid being punished? Yeah, we could, but you know what's worse than getting fined? Oh, yeah, prison. Spoilers. Ned Stark didn't trend on Twitter just because he lived through another episode. Oh, come on, Alex. I was waiting for the DVD box set. Ah! Although Alex probably does have a good point about the disconnect between these proposed laws and the way young people want to consume their content nowadays. So explain to me again why everyone is parting so much? Because American TV is amazing. Right, well, we do fast track US shows here two hours later. Yeah, but I'm not home at 8.30. Okay, well, there's a repeat channel where we play it again at 10.30. Yeah, but not in the mood to watch it then, so. Uh, so you watch shows when they're not on? Yeah, I watch them on my laptop in bed. Well, great, let's upload this week's episode to iTunes. Yeah, but I've got an Android phone, doesn't work with iTunes. You watch TV on your phone? Yeah. I binge three episodes of Bob's Burgers on my way here. Sure, and I suppose you make phone calls through your television as well. <laughs> I do. I have a smart TV. I don't really know what I'm doing. Yep, I am beginning to get that impression. Hey, TV networks and government ministers, if you make the content affordable, accessible, timely, and distribute it in the way we actually consume our media, then the only excuse people will have for torrenting something that's readily available will be because they enjoy being a pirate for piracy's sake. Isn't that right, Alex? And if you don't heed my words, Brandis, then... <coughs> Youth, unite! We ride on Parliament at dawn. Nick, you don't have a car. Well, if someone could picketh me up around six-ish, that would be much appreciated. We'll be back in a moment. <coughs> hey, guys, can you give Nick a lift to Parliament House in Canberra? Has your car got ample legroom and comfortable leather seats? Is it a convertible? We'd love to hear about it. Jump on Twitter at the Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. And finally, a group of students interrupted the filming of last night's Q&A, protesting a proposal that would see university fees and the universities themselves deregulated. The students struggled to unfurl their banners, their chanting was unintelligible, and they pissed everyone off. So in other words, it was a pretty successful student protest. The protest was directed at Christopher Pine, who is the only education minister in history who looks like he should still be in primary school. And the group of students interrupted panellist Anna Burke when she tried to answer a question from one of their own members. Well, I must be the oldest one here because I got my oh, undergraduation. I'll take that as a really obnoxious comment. Frustratingly for the students, they never quite got their banner unfurled. You know, if they'd just managed to get it over the railing, their protest would have worked and education would have been free for everyone. You guys had your chance and you f***ed it. As it stood, the brave protester's unintelligible rant did not change the world, but it did make Christopher Pine consider one change in policy. Does this mean you won't have me again? <laughs> And in an effort to regain control, the show's producers had to think fast to cover the protesters being ejected from the audience. So they played an old performance by Katie Noonan singing Hearts A Mess. Let me occupy your mind. Wait, so that's not Adele? Huh. 
So what did the protesters have to say about their shenanigans last night? To anyone doubting the effectiveness of our protest, an article about the action is on the front page of the SMH this morning. Ooh, and the Herald article about your cause was titled... Q&A hijacked by protesters. A hijacking. That is literally one of the worst words in the English language. No one ever says, hey, how about that great hijacking? The truth is, the Q&A protesters were lucky they got kicked out of the studio. Because when you start chanting in the middle of a live broadcast, it gets pretty tiring around the 22nd mark. So if you're not removed by security, there is no other exit strategy unless you decide to get really creative. No cuts! Okay, no fees! No crooks! No universities! No now they've cut no the live feed. No We've got change! I thought we would have been chucked no out by now. No we only wrote universities. two lines of this chair. No We've lost no the crowd. Are we going to no win them back? No you thinking what I'm thinking? No Bang 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 Mr. Sandman Yes Bring me a dream Make him the cutest that I've ever seen And it's a damn good thing they cut those protesters off because when I watch QA, I want to hear lame rehearsed sound bites from politicians, not lame rehearsed chanting from student politicians. A show is not the way to go! Interrupting a show. What? It's not the way to go. I can't hear you. Interrupting Just, a throw show. Throw the emergency it's clip. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. No, no, no. A you've show. plugged in Nick's it's illegal not hard drive. Not this that. This wouldn't have happened if show. Australia it's had Netflix. Now, right. 